Hello, and welcome to Talk to Downtown. My name is Courtney Wood. I'm the Economic Development Director for the Downtown Stockton Alliance, which is a 501c6 nonprofit property-based business improvement district serving downtown Stockton. This webinar series is intended to connect our business owners, property owners, visitors, and residents with the organizations, people, and resources who can help them address issues which are of top concern to them. Today, we have special guest, Eric Alvarez, he is the Deputy Public Works Director and City Engineer for the City of Stockton. We'll begin by having Eric introduce himself and tell us a little bit more about his role at the City of Stockton. After that, I will open up and um, ask him my questions that I have outlined for him. And at the end, we will have time for the viewers to go ahead and ask your questions. So if you do have a question, please feel free to type it in the comments section. And with that, thank you so much, Eric, for being here, for being our guest today. Please share a little bit about your background and your role at the city and what you do. Oh, thank you. Well, first I'd like to say thanks uh, for allowing me to be here. It's, it's a pleasure. So hopefully it's a, it's a help for anyone who's actually viewing. Um, so as you mentioned, I'm the city engineer, deputy public works director for uh, public works department in the city of Stockton. Uh, I manage about 30 employees on my side. The city of Stockton's uh, org structure is pretty flat. We have basically an operations and maintenance group, and then we have an engineering division. So operations and maintenance division. We have solid waste as well, but the two primary divisions are, are operations and maintenance and engineering. So in my, my shop, I have about 30 engineers. Uh, they're divided amongst the capital uh, project delivery. We have uh, the transportation section, and then we have a group of inspectors. Um, and uh, we are primarily looking at you know, delivering the projects within the city of Stockton. So anything that you see out there in the roadway, and when I say road, right of way, what I mean is that our, our pedestrian walkways and roadways, anything you see out in the street, when you drive every day, uh, any projects you see out there, they're usually coming through my shop. If they're, they're usually a capital project that we're delivering, usually a signal, roadway job, roads, bridges, anything of that nature. Or you're gonna see uh, something that comes through permitting that's an encroachment permit job or other that's done by the private sector. And so uh, we're, we have a, a, a say in approvals on that as well. We also are, um, so basically we're overall, we're managing the engineering division is managing the transportation network, which is comprised of you know, roadways, the bridges in the whole city, the signal system, um, the pedestrian pathways, the park system, all that that you see that are, are public improvements. Um, is what we, we manage, not for operations and maintenance, but we look at it from the engineering perspective. And then, um, we, like I mentioned before, we also inspect all the construction work that's going on in the city. We have a group of inspectors um, that's out there. They're pretty busy, a lot of projects. And then we have, um, I, I participate and collaborate with other departments when it comes to um, primarily uh, the economic development and development projects. And that would be community development and economic development as part of a team that, that takes in applications tries to direct them in the right way, provide them input and get them off and going so that we can actually get some projects built in the city that everybody can enjoy. Wow, okay. So you have a, quite a robust <laughs> responsibility list. Um, most of it's dealing with right of way. And um, you, you told us a little bit more about how the public works department is structured uh, with operations and maintenance and then your side, which is a bit more of the engineering side. Um, so, thanks for the introduction, and are you ready to dive into questions? Let's dive in. Okay, awesome. So, my first question is, um, can you tell us just more about, generally, the overarching goal of the Public Works Department? Like, what would you say is their main purpose? Well, I think it's kind of the name, Public Works, right? So, uh, you were here to support the city in large part, but, uh, you know, it, it is the Public Works element, right? You know? There's economic development and all and so forth, but the the public infrastructure that's in our city, roads, signals, streets, you know, we're we're here to support all of that. And you know, it's if if you think about it, you know, this art we have a lot of challenges with the city because we've been around for a long time. So I think we're 13th largest city in the state. Um, you know, it's it's so we we do have a lot of challenges. We have a lot of old infrastructure. You know, we're playing keep up a lot of times with just trying to keep up uh, you know, the infrastructure with, with the current standards. You know, it gets dilapidated and then, you know, industry changes, right? So, you know, there was a day when there was no signals, you know, there was people out there guiding traffic and, and of course that traffic was forcing carriages and, you know, and, and so forth. So, you know, things move on and uh, we, we have 
a new age now where you know there's talks about complete streets and and so everything's uh, electronic and it's really exciting so us to be able to keep up with the uh, you know uh, the smart city aspects of of and innovation of of our systems you know it it requires that we kind of get out there ahead of things and then bring it bring it back with our systems like traffic signals and and so forth so that's one one thing that we're we'll be really trying hard to keep um, and then in addition to that is you know you have our roadways and so forth but um, you know we're doing all that really to support you know the livelihood uh, of the citizens for city of Stockton so that's the public works part right I mean so a lot of people ask me you know like what, what do engineers do you know civil engineers specifically you know it's everything that you take for granted you know when you get in your car and you know, when you when you live in your home, you know everything that all those services that uh, people use that really don't think twice about. Um, you know, if, if you go back a hundred years, you know people thought about that all the time. You know, where do I put my garbage? Where do I put my my sewage and all that? Well, now those are things you take for granted now, and th those are the things that, from a public work standpoint, you know that we're trying to keep moving forward and keep them, you know, to standard. So amazing. Yes, the things that are almost invisible to us <laughs> because we're so used to them, but they're so critical to our daily lives. It's awesome. Okay. Um, what's something you think people might be surprised to know about your department? Uh, but, uh, okay, well, again, you know, we're, what I'm overseeing is the engineering division. So within my engineering division, I, you know, a lot of people don't really think about, you know, what goes on here. They don't have a chance to see it. And I wish people can come in and actually you know, go into one of our signals in the cabinet and actually see, you know, what's going on. But, you know, I'm pretty proud of the two things here recently. And that one, it's our ability to get a lot of state and federal funds, grant funding for the city of Stockton. We, I have a staff, they're, 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 they work really hard and they're actually really proud at getting the money. And so we kind of follow the money. And money, of course, changes, you know, based on um, legislation and, and the flavor of the money and where, where it wants to go. These days, it's all about active transportation. In other words, uh, bikes and peds, other modes, getting people out of cars. You know, there was a day, you know, 30 years ago when everybody was thinking about cars, I needed to get to my destination as quick as possible. You know, I wanted to well, let's widen all these streets, you know, let's, uh, and, and really ignore the pedestrians and the bikes. So, you know, we get a lot of money in peds and bikes nowadays um, and, and safety improvements. Those are the two flavors of money that are coming in a lot. Um, and also with um, um, some economic development money that's geared towards uh, affordable housing. But we get about 10 to 15 million on the average a year uh, that, wow. the, that the staff pulls in. And so they're doing double duty really. They're, they're engineers, but they're also grant writers. Um, it's a little bit painful in the beginning, but you know we have a system now where we're able to get the money. So we're actually proud of that. The other thing is people maybe would be surprised you know, is that we do have a really sophisticated um, trend uh, traffic signalization network comprised of, you know, not only signals, but uh, most of our 300 plus signals in the city are connected through fiber. And so we're constantly, you know, experimenting and, and working with that system. And I actually didn't realize how ahead of the game we were until I, you know, years ago, I got in meetings with Caltrans and other agencies, and they were always pointing to Stockton as you guys are really ahead of the curve. I didn't realize other cities didn't have what we had. So I, I for one was taking for granted, you know, what we had, but uh, we, we have uh, a lot of systems that are, that we're working right now with adaptive traffic management systems and responsive traffic management system. I call them the gizmos, the gizmos of the traffic world, you know, and they're always changing. And, uh, but, you know, video detection for cars and so forth. So uh, you don't see it, but we're, we're manipulating that and we can pretty much manage our signal system right here. You know, there was a day when when we made adjustments to signals they're all fixed time you know it's kind of like setting your uh, stopwatch and everything ran like that and then they would everything would go out of sync and now everything you can right here from our office on the computer you can change the timing on a good majority of the signals and look at the progression and so it's kind of exciting that together with a whole bunch of um, new technology that's coming for a smart city so it's the internet of the things that's coming, in, you know, you have the internet of the people and the internet of the things, and that's what we're angry with. So those are probably the two biggest highlights. That's amazing. And those are both such great things to know that I, I don't think many people do know um, about all the grant money that you guys are able to bring in 
for grant writing. And that we're uh, technologically advanced when it comes to traffic signaling. That's amazing, <laughs> very cool. Okay, the last question I have before we kind of go into some other um, aspects. This question is, um, what is the most common question that you get um, at your department? So maybe there's a question you hear over and over. It's like, what is that question and how do you answer it? Yeah, so first thing I'd say, you know, anybody can get on to ask Stockton and I'll post your question. We get a lot of them. Okay, uh, uh, not surprisingly, you know, most of our questions are operations and maintenance related. You know, it's the things that people, you know, that potholes and lights are out. And um, that's that's the other division of the public works. Again, uh, with me overseeing the, the engineering division. The, and I was talking to my, my city traffic engineer about this the other day. I, I think the, the most common, there's no one question, but the most common theme of questions is around safety. Um, in our traffic network. And what I mean by that is, you know, a lot of people call and, you know, everybody, by the way, everybody's a traffic engineer out there and saying, we really appreciate that because we actually get some good input. But, you know, there's a frequent request for stop signs um, and traffic signals and, and, um, and safe crossings for pedestrians. Those are kind of like, I think the three, uh, but it all orients around like safety. It's, it's the, the need and the awareness of the public to want to increase safety at uh, at any given location for for certain reasons. So those are the co the common kinds of questions. Um, mm -hmm. How we answer those, well, it's it just depends. Yeah, uh, believe it or not, like one question we get a lot of times is you know speeding. You know, there's speeding on this corridor, and sometimes it's because of it's a it's a loud motorcycle. So there's this perception sometimes that you know volume or how loud a car is means that it's speeding and that's not always the case, you know. So well, we have tools in our uh, you know, toolbox to actually try to evaluate things. So sometimes we'll put a speed trailer out there with that to record rate, um, you know, the, the, the speed and we can actually get the data. So, so to answer these questions, most of the time we try to get as much data uh, of the facts as possible. And then we can have a conversation with the folks and then sometimes we, get, we both get educated about like what the real problem is. And to be honest, uh, when we, we do appreciate when we get calls because, you know, it's a population of 300,000 plus people. It's a large city. Um, we find out every day about things uh, we didn't know about because of people that call in. Uh, we always laugh internally. Every time we turn around, there's a mid-block crosswalk someplace, you know, that's, uh, that's not exactly easy to cross. <laughs> <laughs> and we, and we keep looking at each other like, you know, did you know about that one? And, and uh, we're like, no, okay, we'll add it to the list. You know, we go out and we evaluate it. So uh, that's pretty much how we operate. Right? But the question is all mostly around safety and traffic. Very interesting. And um, if someone does have concerns like that, maybe they do need a stop sign in their neighborhood or they do have some other safety concern related to the right of way, uh, what's the best way for them to kind of voice their concern? I think the Ask Stockton uh, is, is the best place. And uh, if you have pictures or mo more detail, the better. And uh, we, we get out there and we evaluate it. Uh, some of the answers, we at least get back to folks. Sometimes the answers aren't as quick because, uh, you know, when it's, when it's operations and maintenance, you can go out and fix a pothole. There's a definitive time. If we've got to evaluate something and get data, um, then that's another thing. It takes a little longer. And then also just being aware that there's cer certain traffic, we call them warrants, right? But it's basically they're um, some short of a legal checklist that our traffic folks have to check off uh, that, that the device or the, the item being requested has to, um, has to comply with per the vehicle code or the manual uniform traffic devices or any you know, traffic um, you know, engineering logic. And, and if it doesn't meet those, those requirements, it's, it's usually a no, you know, so we give no's and we give yeses and, and we hate to give no's, but, uh, but we do give those when we, when we need to. So. Awesome. Yes, Ask Stockton, Ask Stockton is a great tool um, for just voicing any concerns that people have. So thank you for sharing that. Okay, so my next question is, how does the work that you do in your department kind of coordinate with the work of other departments? How do you guys work together? Okay, so uh, the, the biggest, uh, I, I think, intersection of uh, departments uh, work that comes with, with public works and others is probably development. So uh, uh, a lot of that work, uh, there's a, a team that collaborates between community development 
economic development, public works, and he had municipal utilities department. And it's all geared towards trying to steer the applicant in the right direction, provide them with the, with the answers they need. So, um, you know, they can have a one, they know what's what they're getting into and that their project goes as smoothly as possible. So, you know, there's economic, economic development review committee, and that's a great tool for folks if they're interested in, in um, trying to uh, deliver some sort of a development project, uh, you know, by all means come in. Um, and if, if they're not, and, and what's great about that, you have multi-departments that come in, fire department, usually the key ones are fire, mud, public works, economic development, and community development. So community development is pretty much the planning and, and some, some of the engineering. Public works, of course, is, you know, the roads, streets, bridges, signal system, access. Those are the questions that we usually try to provide answers to. You know, our municipal utilities department is providing answers to infrastructure. So if you have a development project, you know, it needs like, you know, we talked earlier about all those things that you take for granted. You know, you need sewers, you need water, you need all the, you need the, the you know, the utilities. So they can provide answers to that. There's, um, and then, you know, the planning is community development and economic development. You know, there might be some, some incentives and, and some loans and so forth. But it, the whole purpose of that um, meeting is to provide direction, input, and as much you know, information as possible. So the applicant is um, knowledgeable. Um, so there's that. And, that, and, if the, and, and once uh, an applicant gets past that, you know, you know, then, uh, then we can help them a little further. But, but the development side is usually where um, my, my role and department um, crosses a lot with the other departments. Economic development has a real property agent. Uh, her name's Amanda. So um, a lot of times development projects have a right-of-way component. In other words, there's a dedication of right-of-way, there's an abandonment of right-of-way, sometimes streets, portions of streets, you know, are given back to the community um, and she'll handle that piece. The community development uh, uh, and they'll handle, handle the planning and the application piece. And there's also engineers that, that I also supervise over there that are looking at the plan checking portion. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of tied to these departments, you know, through the development. Amazing. So whenever there is a development project, usually all the departments are trying to uh, work together through the economic review committee to see like what what are the requirements from each of us that this developer needs to know. Yeah, and, and I've, I've uh, what I've, at least from my vantage point, uh, customer service is, is pretty important to everybody. You know, so uh, we try to be as customer service oriented as possible. Um, I won't say we're perfect because nobody is, uh, but we usually try to come back and, and make up for um, any misinformation or, um, you know, that kind of thing. And I think um, generally everybody's pretty helpful, so. Great. Okay, so now that we're talking about development, what kinds of private and public projects do require input or review from your division? Like what kinds of conditions um, might there be in a development project that would trigger the necessity for a review from your department? Yeah, good question. Um, and, and actually those kind of, uh, the, the answers to those questions usually will come first in that economic development review meeting. Um, but if you think about from a public works perspective, you know, the kinds of conditions or requirements that we're going more likely going to require Oh, it'll, it'll not only relate to whatever's in our roadway, right? So sidewalks, access points, you know, um, you know the street itself. You know, sometimes there's 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 development that occurs. There is no sidewalks, for example, no no portion of a street. So we'll require you know to place the improvements per our standard. Um, that's one of my roles is to develop the standards for the city. That changes uh, over the years depending on you know materials and and um, just industry standards and so forth, but we're going to want to see a development project try to comply with our standard. It gets a little bit uh, more difficult when you're in infill development and let's say in downtown, right? Downtown is, is a beautiful place, has a lot of old sidewalks and uh, it's, a lot of stuff's not for standard. We try to do our best so that we don't, uh, obviously you can't take out everything, right? But try to comply with the standard as much as possible. Access points is probably an, another thing, depending on the use, uh, there may be a change in use for a business uh, than what was there before. So it, there's a lot of trucking um, facilities coming in, for example, right? And so depending on the volume and what size car or truck is coming in, you know, we're going to look at that and we're going to ask for information so we can help the applicant 
make sure that they can get their vehicles inside their development, first of all. Um, but we're normally going to probably going to uh, have a condition regarding the number of access points and where the access is at, right? Because when uh, people and cars come off of the property, that's when you start engaging with traffic in the roadway, right? And so there are certain places we want traffic to come in and out of and uh, uh, to actually avoid accidents and make it the more organized uh, development with the traffic. So you'll see that. Um, if it's larger developments, a lot of times they'll come with environmental documents and there's larger impacts with larger developments because um, there's more cars and so forth. And so um, sometimes there's right away dedications uh, that are needed and it's really needed not because you need to conform to the width of a roadway, right? So you're gonna need more right away. And, but those normally aren't um, big, big deals. Um, you know, with any, with any development, uh, what causes uh, uh, more concern are those items that are more costly, of course, right? So that's why um, uh, developers, when they come in, they, they really need to do their due diligence, talk with a lot of folks, talk with engineers, good engineers that have done work before, and get a really good idea of what they're getting into. And um, would you recommend that they talk to you directly or is there someone um, else at the city that they should be talking to to kind of get a really good idea of the cost of the, um, any kind of infrastructure improvements that might come along with their project? Yeah, I think it, it, um, before they talk to the city, it, uh, if they really do have a serious project, if it's a, usually it's a large project, they're engaged with an engineer um, and they probably done, the, the developer has done a development project before. So that wouldn't be uh, the kind of developer that would, um, I, I would probably, they would, it would need any advice, right? It's usually somebody who's doing something for the first time, hasn't done a lot of development. So I think the first resource would be if, uh, they're, if they're gonna get an engineer on board, you might as well get the engineer early and get an experienced engineer that has done those kind of developments before because they can get a whole bunch of information just from the engineer. Um, and talking with other people that have done developments if they have that resource. If not, they can they can come in and, and start talking at the counter with certain departments, but that economic review committee is really a great resource. They can, I would say that would be, if they can get to that community, that, that committee meeting, um, that would be a, a great first. I see a lot of people come in at economic uh, uh, development review meetings and, and uh, you know, their development may, may not uh, come to fruition, uh, because of the information they're getting, but um, that's a great resource. And, and of course they can always, you know, call any one of the departments and we can uh, steer them in the right direction because, you know, sometimes questions aren't, they're more focused and they're not necessarily a question that's for public works or for community development. It might be, hey, you know, do I have a sewer line there? So <laughs> then we shut them over to mud and, and so, and they can get an answer or public works can help. You know, I try not to, to shuttle people over to somebody else if I know the answer. Um, so, so anyway, there's a lot of resources. That's what I would do. Okay, yep. So I keep hearing that the Economic Review Committee is the first step. And I did hear that also when I was talking to Nicole Snyder from the City Economic Development Department. So for any developers out there, that should be definitely the first step if you're thinking of um, conducting any development project in the city of Stockton. Okay. Um, so you mentioned how downtown has its own um, kind of like unique concerns that maybe people need to be aware of when they're conducting development here due to the um, old <laughs> infrastructure. Uh, so what are some specific things that maybe private developers should be aware of in downtown um, when it comes to engineering requirements? Um, well, I think one of the things that's been occurring, I don't, it's not a big issue, but uh, just making sure that there's enough uh, capacity for for storm, I'm not storm, but sewer capacity. Um, I, our municipal utilities department has been working on a master plan for uh, their sewer sewer infrastructure, um, and and looking at um, trying to get a better idea of what sewer pipelines need to be rehabbed. Um, we're doing that with some of our projects while we're there. Um, it's not a big concern, but I would at least ask the question, hey, do I have sufficient capacity for my project? If you look at downtown, you know, it was a bustling place. You can look at the pictures and old historical photos, right? It was, it was a lot of people living downtown. It was a, a lot of uh, mixed use. A lot of uh, people were shopping downtown, a lot of cars. Uh, so there definitely is sort of capacity. It's just the lines rolled. Um, that's kind of where we want to be. But the, the other uh, 
problem is probably more just antiquated curb gutter and sidewalk that's there and then access, you know, because uh, um, the uses now that they're trying in the downtown area, um, you know, they're not like they used to be, right? So access was geared towards what was there probably 40, 60 years ago. And because um, the uses are different, it, it has a different interaction with uh, traffic and the amount of access points that folks need. So it's not something we can't get over. It's just something that we like to talk about. Um, and then of course, we have a lot of the capital projects that we're delivering on our own, that these are non-private, right? That are crisscrossing through downtown because downtown is, is, a, uh, is a focus of the city for a lot of reasons and has been. Um, I consider it a jewel of Stockton. And I think one day, uh, if people are patient, it's, we're going to get it back to um, the way it was. It won't happen, you know, fast, but we're working on it. So we're making of, progress. <laughs> yeah, making progress. Awesome. I agree. It is a jewel. Um, so I have a question about if there are infrastructure changes that need to be made um, due to a development project coming in, maybe the sidewalk that you're mentioning. I'm just curious, does the burden of the cost of um, installing that new infrastructure, does that fall on the developer alone or does the city participate in that as well? Yeah, the short answer, it, it always falls on a developer, but with downtown, we're always looking for ways to try to, um, you know, make sure that development can happen, right? So that's one of the challenges, right? I mean, so you have old infrastructure. I think one of the fears I've sensed from developers is, you know, am I gonna have to replace everything when I'm there? I, I mean, I, we'll, we'll, we take a, it's, because it's, it's infill development, I think we take a little different view at, at how we can actually make the development happen. And so it just kind of depends on, on the development itself, right? Depends on how much, you know, there's a lot of development going on right now in downtown where they're, I think there's one right now that they're, they're raising a building. It was the old RTD uh, rail uh, building that's down there. Um, and that would be a case where whatever they build, uh, they'll probably put in a new curb gutter and sidewalk. It's just because it's the, the size of the project. Yeah. If it was uh, rehabbing a building, pr probably not. Yeah, so we take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. But, yeah. That's good to know. Good to know that um, it kind of depends on what they're doing and where they're doing it. Oh, definitely. Gotcha. So can you share just any common engineering errors or pitfalls you've witnessed uh, with developers and maybe how people can avoid them? I mean, sounds like going to the economic review committee, scheduling that first is <laughs> maybe the first thing to do, but is there anything else that you can maybe share? Yeah, I'm not sure if there's anything large, you know, uh, any engineering catastrophes of sorts, you know. I think the biggest biggest uh, thing I would I see is is probably the un um, the unexperienced developer going into a project without, you know, knowing knowing who, you know what he's getting what the person's getting into. So there's some surprises along the way, mainly you know money surprises, right? Because they didn't realize they were going to have to maybe take out extra sidewalk or, you know, do the different things to mitigate their project. Um, so it's really not any large engineering mistake more than um, just realizing, you know, trying to get as much information and get yeah, that you can so that you can eliminate all the surprises and you know what you're, you're, you're getting into and you can plan accordingly. So, but, but outside of that, there's, I, I can't, I think the only surprise that here lately has been, uh, there, and what I mean by that, and then it goes back again to like, what am I getting into, right? Is, you know, we've, we've got a paralleling minor avenue, a uh, pretty significant storm pipe that's there. And believe, believe it or not, I mean, a lot of people don't know this, but, uh, you know, there's a, a pipe that goes under um, probably four or five blocks of buildings, primarily a few buildings and some are parking lots and they're parking lots for a reason because there's a pipe there and it's hard to build over. And then eventually it jogs over into, um, uh, into in the minor avenue as you go towards Fremont um, past Wills Point, but that would be that's a case that it's always been problematic, right? You're going to have a, a you want to develop something, you want to put a building there, then you have this pipe in your way, and you have to relocate it or you have to rehab it, right? Because you know it's leaking or whatnot, and that's it's a lot of money and it's a big surprise. There's not a lot of those. That's the only one that I've experienced, and that that I always tell people that's a remnant of our forefathers. Uh, because Minor Avenue used to, right, paralleling Minor, there used to be a Minor Sloop. 
and about, you know, I don't know, early 1900s, you know, our forefathers decided, you know what, we didn't need that, so let's fill that in. And so they did, but they, but they had to put a pipe in there to carry the water. And so great idea at the time, but now, you know, now we're having to deal with it. So, you know, you can blame our forefathers on that, but that's about the only one that I can think of. Okay, so um, historical <laughs> structure, maybe good at the time, a little problematic now. Yeah, no, exactly. The whole historical thing in downtown, right? Because I think the county built their, their building, they found, you know, you know, there's dinosaur bones and, you know, and it's, like, I, like I just mentioned, there was a series of sloughs and so forth in downtown area. So, you know, it's not uncommon to find, you know, historical artifacts, uh, bones, and then uh, also in downtown, but primarily in the street, you know, the, Stockton had a series of trolley cars systems in, in downtown Stockton. And so, uh, you know, with our projects, we're always coming across old railroad ties and, you know, that's hazardous waste. So it just costs more money. Uh, but that's one reason why, if you look at a lot of our streets, they're, they're a lot wider. I mean, you may look at it and say, why, we have, why is it so wide here? Well, it's because there was a trolley car in the middle of one, one time. You know, and it's not there anymore. So we're trying to repurpose the, uh, the roadway and do other things with it. Interesting. I hadn't ever really thought of that, but now that you've um, reminded me of the trolley, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> that is why, why they're so wide. Okay, my next question is more about the public development side. So I would like to know, how do you kind of begin conversations about what, what kind of infrastructure improvements need to happen? Um, does that come from the public to you? And then your department says, okay, we've been hearing this need, we need to kind of make these big changes, or is it something more internally that your kind of department develops on their own? You're like, we've identified these are some problems that we need to fix. Like, where does that um, impetus come from for that? I think it works both ways, but we do um, get a lot of great ideas and we react to comments from the, the citizens. And from that, uh, we go out and we try to do things. Let's put it simple, right? Um, and we do that all the time, especially when it comes to safety. So we'll get a lot of comments that, hey, this is a, 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 an area where it's not safe to cross for pedestrians and, and we'll analyze it. And so we'll go out and try to get some money for that when we can. Most of the time we're successful. So, you know, we put in a, a lot of uh, rapid flashing beacons because based on people's requests, you know, they need to have more um, caution for vehicles. We put in high visible crosswalks. We're working a lot with downtown and the Miracle Mile because there's a lot of, you know, with the success of bringing people in, you get more people. And when you get more people, you have more interactions with vehicles and people. So the, the progression tends to be, oh, wow, well, you know, now we have another problem. You know, before we didn't have people and that was the problem. And then we do all these improvements to bring people. And now we got another problem, which is safety you know, try to make sure that people can cross the street to get shopping and, and without, you know, having interferences with vehicles. So we end up putting in devices for, you know, high vis crosswalks, rapid flashing beacons. Um, recently, I think we got a request for, uh, well, we had concerns over the years for speeding on Oaken Park, um, heading west from center in El Dorado. And that, that's happened repeatedly. And every time we get in discussions with myself and the city traffic engineer, it's always one of those things where, you know, we, when we get repeated requests, they're never going to go away. You might as well put it on our list and let's go try to do something about it. Sometimes it's an easy fix. Sometimes it's, it's a hard fix. But with respect to the Oaken Park, we decided, well, okay, what if we just eliminate a lane and let's, let's put a bike lane in and it's, it'll be kind of part of our traffic calming. And so we're going to try to do that in order to slow cars down. You know, that, that's another interesting thing. You know, 20 years ago, people just wanted to get from A to B as fast as possible, you know, and forget about the pets and and now we're kind of doing the reverse. We're trying to slow cars down as much as possible. And uh, so we can make it safer for bikes and pets. <laughs> so things go full circle, you know? So, so yeah, we get a lot of requests um, and we, we react on that. And then also part of our long range planning for the city and uh, based on, you know, trends and changes in, in, um, in engineering through the years, you know, like I mentioned right now, everything's about active transportation, right? Um, it's not, we're not car centric anymore. Um, 20 years ago or so, you know, we widened a lot of streets in Stockton. We had, you know, I don't know, it was like eight, nine precise road plans that called for widening of March Lane, Hammer Lane, West Lane, 
you know, Pershing Avenue and, and El Dorado, and all, basically all the major corridor streets. And, and we needed it at the time because uh, people don't remember, but Hammer Lane didn't have, you know, railroad grade separations, underpasses or overpasses. It was a two lane roadway at, at grade crossings and traffic was snarled. So we widened all Hammer Lane through the years, put in some interchanges, and now, you know, now we have more traffic. <laughs> So, so that, that so it's like it's, it's kind of like that saying says, you know, if you build it, people will come. But uh, now we're the other way around, where we're repurposing our streets. If we have uh, uh, additional lanes that we don't need, we're going to try to utilize them for bikes and pets, and make it a complete street. So that's the the that's that's what's driving us right now is the idea of complete streets together with what we receive from the citizens as far as what they want, and we try to thread the needle to to make sure that everybody is happy. But, but you know, I like the projects we're doing now because it's, uh, I can say that when uh, I don't, I never have like widening streets. You know, I like bringing projects that can add the quality of life to, to the citizens, right? So that's more, obviously it's more enjoyable. So, you know, but I'd love to see people get on bikes. You know? so, so the more we build our bike network, you know, it's healthier for folks. That's why they call it active transportation. You know? So get on your bike and try to use one of our safe bike routes. <laughs> Yes, bike lanes and making everything pedestrian friendly. Yeah. Maybe maybe a bike share in the future. <laughs> yeah, we're looking at that bike share. Um, you know, it's it's really it's really interesting. You know, uh, but and one of the key focus areas is downtown. So we have a lot of projects that are crisscrossing through downtown on, on purpose. It's not by accident. Um, but so uh, we we have just in a downtown area. Um, we have Hunter, uh, Hunter Street, where we're, that's a four lane roadway. We're gonna take away um, a lane in each direction mm. and we're gonna turn it into a buffer bike lane. So that's gonna have a complete street feel to it. California Street is gonna add another um, buffered bike lane on California Street. We're gonna take away a lane there and that's gonna go from pretty much 8th Street south of Stockton all the way to Alpine. Um, then we have uh, Channel Street, which is actually being right now. It's in design, sponsored by the San Joaquin Rail Commission. Uh, they received several grants uh, to do that project, and I think that's probably a ready project now. And I look forward to going to construction maybe next year sometime with that one. Hopefully, uh, we have uh, what we call our Al Dorado and Center Street uh, bike projects um, that go from. Third Street on the south of town, all the way to uh, just north of Harding Way, and that's good. they're going to add some bike facilities on El Dorado and, and Center, and then we have some east-west projects uh, coming through. So you're going to, I think, with downtown, you're going to see um, a lot of bike facilities coming through. Um, so one, once we do that, I think the uh, the hope is that okay, now we have a decent network and with some connectivity where people can actually go go places and uh, it's more inviting and then you will we'll see people right in the network and then maybe we can talk about bike share right and and actually that's that, that we're already there's already talks of that and i think that's going to come pretty soon as well amazing and of course we got our minor yeah. <laughs> yeah i didn't know about all of those bike improvements so that's that's amazing i think people will soon find that we're pretty bike friendly here in downtown <laughs> awesome. oh. <laughs> okay um, so you just mentioned several projects. Uh, can you share maybe how many projects you're working on in downtown, just um, related to public works and development, not necessarily only bike? Um, can you tell us about those? Well, in development, I, I um, we have we have quite a few projects in development in downtown. I can't, I couldn't name the number, but sure. I can tell you that they, there's quite a few, um, and for the right reason. And then with our with the, our own projects from on the public side, you know, I rattled off a few of those, and yes. I think we probably have at least you know eight or ten that are coming in downtown. And uh, but I'll add to that, we had um, we just completed what we call an act, a downtown active transportation plan. Mm -hmm. And what was good about that is that it actually identified issues for pets and bikes in downtown, and a series of projects that came along with it, recommended projects. And we recently applied for um, some HSIP grant funding and received it for um, for some some pedestrian improvements. So there's a few of those kind of improvements scattered in downtown. 
Um, there's also another, it's a public project, it's called the South Diamond Interchange. That's actually being sponsored by um, the San Joaquin Rail as well. Um, they have a, a consulting firm, uh, HDR, that's working with them. That's a huge project. It's just south of the Crosstown Freeway. And mm -hmm. that's, that's going to be one of the few separations of ra railroad crossings. So, you know, just south of the Crosstown Freeway, there's, there's a BNSF that runs east-west. And we have UP that runs north-south. And by the way, you know, we used to have a lot of rail, rail, rail lines here. You know, there's UP, SB, BNSF. We have a whole bunch of rail facilities. It, it's pretty much wound down to UP and BNSF. And, and there's these tracks that cross, and they actually have to stop and let each other go by. A big problem for them, right? Yeah. It's a problem for us, too, because, you know, they sound their horns, and, you know, there's crossings that stay closed because the train is there. And so... Uh, I think the city's glad that they're coming forward with this project, but it's huge. They're going to elevate um, the north-south uh, train track, and they're going to go over the BNSF. So you'll no longer have this, you know, cross crossing where it's blocking the trains. But the point that I was bringing is that that's going to be a big project just south of the Crosstown. It's going to go underneath the Crosstown Freeway with a new um, rail line. And so we're working with uh, the San Joaquin Rail Mission and their engineer, um, on what we need to kind of mitigate some of the impacts of that. And then uh, there's a, a lot of rail projects because, you know, there's lots of talks in California about rail, all right? So everybody's positioning themselves, you know, for um, ACE and a whole bunch of other rail facilities, but they're going to, uh, the rail commission is extending their uh, track, another track from generally um, downtown north past Alpine. So that's another project. Wow. Uh, so that together with all, all, all of our projects, it just not, there's, it's pretty busy. So you can go downtown and you can see, you know, we get a few complaints about the roads being ripped up, but uh, you know, it's kind of a, it's, good it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's progress uh, being made right before you. And then we also have a rule 20. Rule 20 is basically an undergrounding of some electrical facilities in downtown. And that was really, that project was made in part to have to eliminate the blight for the the, um, the utilities that are on you know uh, power poles, but also to um, help incentivize development down there too because um, it's at, that's one of the requirements for development um, that the underground so it should, should help development as well and then of course we have minor avenue that you can see we we're making great progress on. Yes, yes, these are all amazing. And now that you brought up minor avenue, yes, tell us all about it. You know, how did the idea come about to make this improvement? What role have you played? Um, how long has it taken? Uh, tell us about it. Yeah, it's taken a long time. <laughs> one, the one thing that, you know, I, I talk to people and I, you know, when, you talk, when, you're, when you're doing large projects, and, and by the way, Minor Avenue, yeah, it's, a, it's a large project in terms of its length, right? It goes basically from center to the railroad tracks, Aurora Street, let's say. It's, I mean, we've done those, you know, a whole bunch. But um, what really, of course, like anything, what, what the driver is, is really money, right? Uh, you can do Minor Avenue, it wouldn't take as long. It took, the reason why Minor, Minor Avenue has been around for a long time, the idea of Minor Avenue, and that started it around in 2010, believe it or not. Wow. And, you know, I'll give a person credit, her name was Kitty Walker, she was a planner at the time with the city, she retired. She kind of believed in this project. And I remember back at that time around 2010 or so, you know, everybody was like, ah, who cares about Minor Avenue? I, I can't see it. We have other things to do that are more important, right? You know, and I, you know, I, I kind of agreed with her. It's, it'd be nice to do, but but the problem with a lot of things is, you know, you have to have the money to, to see the things through. And we really couldn't see how we were gonna bring in all the money to redo this whole corridor with all the old infrastructure. Um, but she plowed forward and she got some concept plan done. And then when she retired, she handed it to me and she said, here's my baby. You know, can you please like make sure that this stays important? And so it, it was important to me. And I was born and raised in downtown and I liked the idea of you know re rejuvenating Minor Avenue. And that was really one of the key purposes of Minor is to rejuvenate that facility. If you remember, I mean, you can see it remnants of what it looked like before. It's just really dilapidated. It was a wide street. It had a trolley in it before. You know, it was, it was probably roaring at the time, uh, but it's just fallen in disrepair. Um, so it's a great idea. Um, so we, that was in 2010. And then 
actually the rail commission came around and said, hey, we, th this is important to us too. You know, how about we get a planning grant? And they went and they got like a $40,000 planning grant. We participated with them and we did, that's how we got this concept plan. And then from there, it was like, what do we do next? So in 2000, the next step would be to do a precise road plan and then some preliminary engineering. And so, but we got to have the money again, right? So it always comes back to money. So we went out and the timing was right because there's a flavor of money coming in that would pay for that, what we needed. We, we got the money. So we had this uh, precise road plan that we did from center to the railroad tracks or Aurora Street. And then it's like, okay, now what? And we need more money. So it's always <laughs> back to the money thing. And so we weren't sure we're, how we're gonna get the money, but then active transportation program came, a federal funding source. But you know, when these funding programs come in, there's usually a set amount that they wanna funnel towards any one project. And it's usually like, I don't know, $5 million or so. And so uh, I wasn't really happy at the time. We, we, I remember because we submitted a grant and we were gonna go from center to Hunter Street, like two and a half blocks. And I thought this is just, it's not what I want, but if I can get the money the thought was if I can get the money for that little piece, then I know that people would be saluting the project, thinking that it's great, and I can probably get money for the rest. So wow. we did, so we did get the money for that, and then it kind of raised our hopes a little bit, and then we started applying for more money uh, phases to it. And at the end of the day, I think we received uh, our first grant was in 2014, and after several grants, we finally got it full, fully funded probably four years ago, and then. It was like, yay, you know, we have all this money. Um, we still needed to bring in a little bit more, which we ended up doing. Um, but then you have to design it and go through the environmental ramp. And so uh, when we went through the environmental, you know, like I mentioned before, Minor Avenue is, a, is an old antiquated roadway. It has a, it used to be Minor Slough that was there. We, um, we, we had to go through a lot just to get the environmental done. But once we got that done and we had a set of plans ready to advertise and we knew we were, we were gonna actually go build something. And that's when we, everybody gets excited. So that project, you know, we, you know, we, we've started it. It's gone fairly smoothly. I can't say it's gone perfect. It's an old roadway. Uh, one of the things we found uh, was uh, the first thing was, hey, our sewer that's in the roadway is pretty bad. We didn't really know how bad it was. So we had to replace all pretty much all laterals on the whole project. Some some pipes were actually there was no pipe there. It was just the the earth that was pipe. And then of course you've got the, just so it's the utility part. And then um, once we got out of the ground, like we are now, it's it's a lot better. A lot more we can see the light at the tunnel, and, and um, I think we're looking to get it substantially complete by the end of the year. That the contractor is really pressing hard because you know it's getting cooler. I see clouds out there. Um, they want to be able to pave, and so they're looking to pave sometime Novemberish. Um, if they can't end in November and then it'll be probably at that point open the traffic and then substantially complete and then we'll probably wrap things up at the at the, the beginning of the following year it's all about the weather at this point you know that's usually how the game goes it's and all in all that project is about a 16 to 18 million dollar project wow and so wow. You're, it, took, it took 10 years to get it from just the idea to actually finishing it that is amazing work that is so amazing and most all of that money was grant grant funded uh about i would say 75 plus percent of it yeah the rest of it we have some money from utilities because i have to deal with the utilities um our own money for uh, our flexible funding sources for transportation but you know we try to because we we are we, we need more money on our transportation side, we always do. We try to get as much federal and state funding as possible. And so we managed to do that with this project. But the, of course, the nightmare is that we've got, let's say five grants that we have to manage. So it'd be, you know, it'd be like paying your, uh, paying your household utilities out of five check, checking accounts. <laughs> so A lot of um, keeping records, I'm imagining. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it is, it is. That's like detailed record. <laughs> Yeah. Amazing. That's awesome. Okay. So it sounded like depending on the weather, you were estimating a completion date of next year. And uh, at the end of this year will be substantially complete. And then uh, wrapping things up by the uh, beginning of next year, first quarter of next year, probably. 
Do you think you'll have any kind of celebration or ribbon cutting when it's? Oh yeah, out? yeah, for sure. We're already <laughs> talking about that right right now. Um, but you know, with COVID and so forth, we'll have to we'll just have to wait and see when we get there. But we'd love to have uh, some sort of celebration. Absolutely. Awesome. Yes. Thank you for doing all of that work. I'm very excited to see the completion. Um, it's, it's it's amazing. Amazing. Okay, I just have a couple more questions before we open it up to our viewers. So the question I have right now is, um, how has COVID-19 affected the processes of your department, if at all? Um, has it maybe made, um, kind of called on you guys to make any improvements to processes and how you run the department? Um, any other changes at all? Um, actually, you know, I everybody's always comparing notes with agencies, like, you know, what are you doing? And so mm -hmm. forth, right? Yeah. And with uh, our department, uh, there was only one time at the beginning of COVID when everybody was sent home. That was for no more than two months. It was like a month and two months. And then everybody came back. And so for the most part, Public Works and the city at large has is, is been working out of the offices. We've never really gone home. Um, so that part, um, didn't change as much, you know, the, but even when we we're in, in the, what did change is, is our being able to interact with each other in the office because of COVID regulations and so forth, right? And having social distancing, that part, uh, uh, it, it changed our environment a little bit, but, um, you know, but not, not a whole bunch. I think the biggest impact to us has been with our projects when we have to do any kind of public outreach, we, we had to shift gears and figure out like how are we going to do this and some projects we just put them on hold you know because we we don't it's really important that we don't have any surprises out there with what we're doing um and that people get um information uh, and uh, you know as far as what's going to be coming through their neighborhood for the most part a lot of our stuff is, is not impactful you know it's just we just like to have that conversation with with the public so there, there's no surprises and when we do have impacts then we just have to find other ways to um to have a conversation with the property owners out there. You know, so what we like to do normally on uh, without COVID would be to have a public series of public meetings or a public meeting or two, you know, just to kind of explain the project, introduce the team and explain the schedule and, you know, what's going on with the project. Um, now, and even now today, we're talking about probably sending out um, flyers and then more focused flyers to those folks that maybe have an impact and having, you know, phone conversations or maybe having, uh, if, if ever anyone's agreeable to it, having maybe one-on-one, -on -one. but we haven't really um, fully engaged in any public outreach yet. So that's been the biggest impact, but how to stop this from delivering projects. <laughs> okay, thank you. And my last question is, um, is there any way that people can get in touch with you to learn more? Um, and like, what's the best way for them to do that? And also, is there anything else that you would like people to know about the work that you do? Yeah, so um, there, like I mentioned before, if there's any questions that, uh, that are um, relative to the transportation network, you can always get on to Ask Stockton if it's, it's something of that nature. Um, you can always reach me by my email address, you know, eric.alvarez at stocktonca.gov. Um, and uh, if I don't have an answer, I'll be more than happy to you know, provide you with somebody you can. I get a lot of the, those questions and, and email is actually the best way. Um, that way it, it gives me a, a way of forwarding emails and, and introducing people to other folks via email. And that usually is, is really helpful. Um, but I, like I said before, I usually try to help folks with what I can. Um, but you know, you'd be surprised at what kind of questions I get to that are really not even in my, you know, in my wheelhouse, but sometimes I try. <laughs> Yes. Awesome. Um, is there any last things that you'd like to share about your work? Um, I, I, well, the only thing is that, uh, you know, I have a, a staff that are they're really proud of what they do, and uh, I think they're really helpful. I mean, our, our goal here is, is to be supportive, and uh, we always say, you know, we are each other's customer. In addition to the outside, everybody's our customer. So that's our, um, our kind of our, our front for everybody. Um, and if there's any great ideas out there, we'd be more than happy to receive them because we can always turn great ideas um, into reality if we can find the money. 
you know, so we, we love that. We, we've got a list. I keep a list personally of uh, things that people tell me. Um, and uh, and they, I call it, uh, you know, it's, it's my dream projects. And but you'd be surprised <laughs> at how many projects I picked off of those. You know, uh, you know, Minor Avenue is one of them. Uh, so yeah, you know, we're, we're here and available. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eric. That's the conclusion of my questions that I had for you. Thanks for answering all of them. I'm sure that everyone learned a lot. I know I did. Um, so we do have just a couple of viewer questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> okay. So the first question is uh, from Kai Tolliver. He's asking, what's the most fulfilling part of your position? And he says, thank you for your time. Uh, well, you know, I came here for, it's probably the, the, the first reason why I came here, which is I wanted to try to give back to the community. I was born and raised in Stockton. Uh, I used to work for the Department of Navy in the Bay Area, I worked for Caltrans. I did a little gig with the county. Um, you know, I, you know I, I was doing, uh, my, I come from a family of contractors, you know, so I, I'm used to building stuff. Uh, so one day I decided uh, maybe I had to come back to Stockton and try to see what I can do. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, I've been here for a while. I won't say how long, um, but I've been here this long because it's been fun and uh, and challenging, and it still is. Uh, so that's I think the biggest uh, enjoyment I get out of my job is just kind of uh, uh, seeing things that I, I put my hand on. Amazing, seeing that you can make a change from from what you're doing in your role, and you can see it. <laughs> These are visible changes. Awesome. Okay, the next question I have is from Michael Huber. Um, he's saying the Minor Avenue project looks great. Uh, what other types of beautification projects are planned for downtown that you can share? So I know that you shared several. Um, are any of those maybe specifically beautification kind of oriented? Um, well, we've got, um, okay, Minor Avenue, we're just looking forward to building Minor Avenue. In fact, I like, I want to get it to the point where it's beautified, right? So I think one of the things I keep asking today of the engineer is like, when are they going to put in the landscaping? You know, when are they going to put in the trees? Yeah, <laughs> I, want to, I want to see it pop, you know? So yeah. once that happens, then uh, there's another project that's coming. It's called Ch on Channel Street that I mentioned. And that should make a, a, a big visible impact in downtown. Um, and and then the rest of them are, is just the bike lane. So I think you're going to see a big change in the feel of downtown, especially with the bike component. And then when you see green paint, because that's part of the bike facilities, you know, that has, that, that's interesting in itself, you know? And so that would be good. When it comes to uh, beautification, uh, there's one, there, there used to be a federal funding source called Transportation Enhancement Activities Grant, T money. And that was specifically geared to beautify things. So, and that was wonderful. That was the only time I've been here in, in, at my job here or there was actually a funding source that, that was specifically geared for that. I think it, it may be coming back with some other funding source because I'm tracking it, but you know, we did uh, you know, at Airport Way and we were able to put in a lot of greenery and stuff. So until we get a funding source that where we can do big projects like that, then it, it won't be real possible to, like, to green things up. Uh, but then of course the other uh, challenge is, you know, then you gotta maintain all that. And it, it, the, the fact is it costs money. So one of the challenges was Stockton. And is that, you know, when we're an old um, municipal agency, right? And uh, so what distinguishes us from other agencies is that are built from the ground up brand new is that they are heavily assessed. And so the, the, the community buys into that. They pay the assessments and taxes and all that. So there is a funding mechanism to do all that. But Stockton, there's a big portion of Stockton that's not assessed. All the new development, yeah, they've got assessments. And so, you know, it's easy. But the challenge with Stockton is, um, you know, say like from downtown where there's, uh, there's, there's no assessments because it, it was built a long time ago, right? So that's something that I think we're going to be wrestling with um, probably forever unless we get some sort of assessment. But, you know, it's a fun challenge. I like to see things change. Um, I think part of what will help in downtown is just some of these development projects because you don't always have to, to you know, bring in landscape and all that to make things look nice. You know, I think if they look interesting, that's good because once you yes. bring in people, right, and things start to look interesting and you have a new vibe and all that, uh, that's what gets exciting. And then people come down and, and that's what they're coming here for. They're not, 
it'd be nice to have those extra trees and that will come. But I think right now we'd like to get that, the people and the vibe going for downtown. Definitely agree. Creating an interesting place to be. <laughs> right. And I know Mike's doing a lot of good things too, um, on, you know, with downtown Stockton Alliance and, and the city really appreciates that, you know. Um, I think mine Ravney we're putting in, uh, we're going to be putting in the, um, well, it's not really artwork per se, but it's the fountain structure that was with the state court, the facilities that we salvaged that. We're going to be putting in the roundabout of mine Ravney. I'm really happy to do that. That was actually our one request of Mike's. And I, I didn't have a problem saying I'll, I'll do it. It was, you know, again, everything goes down to money, right? So I had to check what our funding sources was on my side. And it seemed like I could handle it. So, um, and I can. So we're going to put that in. In fact, I think uh, I just saw where they're putting in the, um, uh, the rebar for the the uh, pedestal that's going to be placed there at the roundabout that will support the um, that structure we're putting in. So anyway, keep stay tuned for that. That's, yes, that's amazing. As soon as we heard that you guys were looking for art, immediately we thought, oh, this is where, where we can put the spear. Yeah. <laughs> <Or spire. laughs> yes. Um, um, interestingly, the next question is directly tied to that. This is from Johnny Palacios. He says Minor Street is looking really nice, and he's he asked, "Is it true that the sphere, uh, formerly located in the fountain at Hunter Square, will be going in the roundabout being built on Minor?" So the answer is, the answer yes. is yeah, <laughs> it is, yeah. And I'm I'm happy to say that uh, yeah, we're going to be putting that there. We had it in storage for uh, a long time. There's been a lot of interest in putting it in different places, but again, you know, you have to have the money. And this was an opportunity that I saw. We have our big this big project, and and to be honest. Um, I was looking for something to put there at the roundabout. So, you know, it, it just happened to work out. And that that idea actually started with me when we had our initial public meetings with Minor Avenue, probably in the, the concept phase, say 2012 to 2014. And somebody came, approached me and said, hey, Minor Avenue, you know, the name Minor Avenue, according to this person, uh, it was named Minor Avenue because the miners used to to leave that roadway out to oh. you know, the foothills while when they were going to, you know, to to go to mine gold. And it would be nice to have something to to signify that or just some sort of feature in the roundabout. And so um, I think something is needed there at the roundabout. It, 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 it will be a focal point. It'll be uh, uh, something that'd be good to see when you're going around the roundabout. And plus we salvaged another part of the history of Stockton. Um, and uh, I, I knew the gentleman that actually did the original architectural design for the spear. Really? So, so it's, it's a good connection for me too. That's amazing. Yes, we're very excited about that. Thank you for implementing that into your design. Okay, there's just one last question. And this is from um, the Downtown Stockton Alliance. This is probably from our marketing person. And um, he's asking, will we see any development in the city to implement artistic bike racks in downtown? It's, it's very possible. I'm open to that. Um, actually, bike racks are part of my, our uh, bike master plan. You know, so I, I didn't mention that, but we what started the whole bike um, mentality going. It started when we redid our bike facility master plan. So uh, anyway, long story short, you know what we did in the past wasn't working. You know, bike facilities weren't connecting, wasn't safe. So we did this bike master plan, and uh, we are really excited about what could happen with bikes in Stockton. But there's a couple of components in there. You know, there's not only bike facilities, I mean, that's part of it, the bigger part, right? But once you have bike facilities, you have to have wayfinding signs, you know, and you have to have bike racks to actually accommodate folks, you know, that are actually going places, um, bike lockers, and there's a whole bunch of other th things that go along with creating a bike um, facility or infrastructure in, in the town, including if folks are working in offices, you know, the idea of maybe they can provide showers so people can actually, you know, bike from long, longer distances, shower and go to work and that kind of stuff. Wow. Uh, there's all, and then the bike share, the whole bike share component. So there's all these ancillary things that go and are related to um, bike facilities network, but bike racks is a, is a, is a key part of it. Um, uh, um, I don't, I, I'm not involved in art. I help facilitate it. So that could be a discussion. Um, and I like to take the easiest way possible, but yeah, the, the short answer is we're definitely open to that. I'd love, we've had conversations before about can, is there a, a way we can have something that is a statement that this is Stockton and you can incorporate that in the bike racks. And then yes. where DSA can probably help is like, you know, they give me a 
definitive um, business owners that are that were willing to have bike racks at certain locations. So that's really just a research part uh, because not everybody wants to see something in front of their business. You know, you have yeah. bikers and who knows, make them real popular and you have 20 bikes there. Yeah. But uh, that'd be a good thing. But yeah, so we need a little help on that, but we're not there yet. So what, what we're, um, that's probably easier than the wayfinding signs. What, what our, my goal is, is that I would like to get some bike facilities in the ground. I would like to see people on bikes and using them. Um, that'd be really great. Get some momentum going. The bike culture is established. And then I'd love to have wayfinding signs where people can actually see a sign and says, hey, you're going to take this trail or this path to go to there. And then that's when we'll know that we have a, a significant you know, bike network that people believe in and like. So I mean, that's pretty much it for me. Yes. Thank you. And thank you so much uh, for answering all the questions from me and from the viewers. Thanks, Eric. And at this time, I would like to just remind everyone that this video is going to be uploaded to our YouTube channel, which is Downtown Stockton. And if you have been watching us live, then you've already found us on Facebook, but we are also on Instagram at Downtown Stockton and Twitter at Downtown STKN. And with that, I would just like to say Thank you so much viewers for tuning in. I hope that you learned a lot. I know that I did. And thank you so much, Eric. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to answer these questions and to communicate with the community. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> of course. And with that, I would like to just say, have a great day downtown.